This truth from Psalm 97.9. Lord, you are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Let's listen to Derek's prelude called, I am thine, O Lord. When the chimes sound, I'll invite you to stand with your bulletin, if you're able. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Let's 
pray aloud together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hymn 129 is Be Still for the Spirit of the Lord. We'll sing all three verses. seated. Welcome to Farringdon Church on this Pentecost Sunday, May 19th, 2024. We're glad that you're watching from home and pray that God meets all of your needs this day. We'll go through a few announcements in the bulletin. Uh, the first, I just want to say thank you for wearing your name tags. I see a lot of them, and that helps us to be able to call each other by name. And if you don't have one, there is one for you. We have blanks out there, and you just write your name in, slip it in, and wear it each time you're here with us. Now, because it's long weekend and beautiful weather, we're going to be outside right after the service. Normally, we're in the narthex enjoying our our coffee and refreshments, but today we're just going to pick them up here, go outside, and enjoy each other's company out in the front courtyard. Just cold, no coffee. That's right, we're, because it's going to be warm weather, we're serving cold drinks uh, with cookies today. So join us outside, but keep your name tag on, otherwise we'll be standing around going, and you are? So keep that on for our fellowship time after, then put it into the bin so it's there for you next week. Okay. 
Our last Bible study happens this Tuesday at 11 a.m. And we're looking at the church. What is the church? Is it more like a cruise ship? We wish. <laughs> a battleship? Sometimes. Or the fellowship that comes with being part of a church family. So that's our theme Tuesday at 11 in the Book of Romans, down this hallway in our conference room. And then after that we break, we don't have Bible study until the fall again. One thing we are gonna do though over the next few weeks is at 12 o'clock on Tuesday, gather in the conference room for a prayer time. 15 to 20 minutes, everyone's welcome. Those who are part of the Bible study, we end just at 12. You can stay if you want for that extra prayer time, or if you have to leave, that's fine. If you want to just come in for the prayer time at 12 o'clock on Tuesday. What we're going to do is pray for each other, who is in the room, and we're going to pray for our church family. One clear power one clear principle throughout scripture is you only have spiritual power when you pray. And we have found as a church family, and I think individually in our lives, that we keep coming up to these brick walls that just won't move, that seem to be in our way. We've been stuck and stymied. And so we want to pray through that. We want to ask God to give us the power we need as a church family. So that's Tuesday at 12. We're going to do that for a few weeks, and then we'll break for the summer. Ladies, would you sign up for the luncheon, which is at the Windmill Restaurant on May 29th? So that's not this week, but do sign up this week so they can count you in for that luncheon. I want to highlight birthdays and anniversaries. Ethan Meyerink, happy birthday on May 22. And then Dave Kennedy, May 23rd, good to have you back, Dave, and happy birthday. Dave Kirk, May 24th, the day after. And then for anniversaries, it's Bill and Janet Lovkin on the 22nd, and Greg and Annette Holy Holmes on May 24th. Do we have another one? Chelsea's is today. We missed that one. Thank you for mentioning it. So we're going to sing Happy Birthday, Dear Chelsea. All right? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Chelsea. Happy birthday to you. And God bless you. And yes, yes. And do what Deb just did. If your name or someone in your family doesn't appear that should be on the list, call it out. Let us know. But we also have to let Tammy know so that going forward it gets uh, corrected. Caitlin, what would you want to add? Good morning, everyone. So I have a few things to add this morning. First, it is our long weekend, which means there's no junior youth tomorrow night. Uh, but we do have Kids Club on Tuesday, so 6 till 7.30, kids in JK to grade 3. We come on out, we hang out, we have a good time. Students grade 4 through 6 are encouraged to come and help out as junior leaders. There's something for them there as well. And then I always need teenagers to help me out on Tuesdays or on Monday nights with our junior highs, or especially this summer with our VBS program. Program. So this summer, Vacation Bible School is July 8th through 12th, 9 till noon. We're going to have a great week together, but I need lots of help. Specifically, high-energy young people. 
We have most of our slots filled now with our adults down in our snack room, in our craft room. What I really need is people to kind of travel around with all of our young people through our activities. So teenagers, university students, young at heart, who are pretty good at getting up and down and encouraging kids. Um, I just really need that kind of help with our summer program. That said, if you aren't full of energy and still want to be involved, there's always a place for you. I still need a little bit of help with our registration and probably a little bit of help uh, getting things ready ahead of time. So if you're available to help out, please connect with me with that. It's also getting warm out. I pulled out my summer dress this morning. We're having coffee hour outside today, which means our church picnic is coming in about three or four weeks. So there's little tickets in your bulletin. We're trying to be extra prepared this year because we're bringing the barbecue back. So on June 23rd, we're going to join for service in here together. Uh, little kids, teenagers, all the way up to the oldest adults, we're all going to celebrate together in worship. And then following worship, we're going to head on out to the back lawn. We're going to have a barbecue. Everyone's invited to bring a dessert or a snack to share. We're just going to have some time of fellowship together. And chairs, yes, if you have a, have a lawn chair to bring, camp chair, that kind of thing, blankets. Um, and there's more information about that in the bulletin. But please fill this out so we can plan numbers and purchase enough food for that. Also, this morning, in an effort to have our children in service once a month, we're going to be staying up in service today. There's no Sunday school. So what, how that's going to work is we're still going to have children's time. So everyone who usually would come on down to Sunday school is going to come on up here with me. We're going to have our children's time, and then we're going to head back and sit with our parents or grandparents. So you should have got a clipboard in the narthex with a little sermon activity activity sheet on it. I want you to pull that out right now because I want you to change one word on it. So if you have one of these, there's a spot on here that says listen to the sermon and mark every time you hear this word. I want you to scratch off the word heaven and change it to spirit. Pastor Mike has told me he'll be talking about the spirit this morning so we're going to listen carefully for that and if you fill this all out and trade it with me at the end of service get a sweet treat so keep those things in mind this morning and enjoy the rest of our service We've added Jennifer Dean to the prayer list for this week because she has surgery on Friday, May 24th. We just found out that one of our longtime members, Ruth Bryant, passed away this past week. There will be a private interment in our burial ground on Tuesday, May 21st. Those are all the details I have about Ruth. We received notice that Warren Getke went home to be with the Lord. Many of you know that Warren played organ and sometimes piano for us. And his memorial service will be next Sunday, May 26, 3 p.m. And that's at McLeister's funeral home. But the visitation will be the day before, Saturday, May 25th, starting at 2 p.m. And then another session of visiting Sunday at 2 p.m. That's listed in your bulletin. We also just heard that Teeny Vanderstelt's niece. So that would be cousin to Rod and Cheryl, Carla, Tanya. She went home to be with Jesus. Her name was Wendy, and I don't know if it's Colin or Colin, her, her last name, but May 14th, 
2024 was her passing at the age of 62, and her funeral was held yesterday. So if you remember the Vanderstelts in their loss this week. Then finally, with deep sadness, we announce that our member, Brian Boyd, passed away peacefully in the hospital on Thursday, May 16th, 2024, at the age of 78. His fight against cancer is over, and he is home with Jesus, where he longed to be. If you were here last Sunday, you know that Brian wanted me to greet you, and I did, by letting you know that he was ready, looking forward to going home to heaven. And so we extend condolences to Brian's adult children. The funeral service will be here in our church Friday, May 24th at 1 p.m. And then visitation will be after the service. They're going to have refreshments in the narthex like we normally do. And if the weather's great, there will be outdoor time in the courtyard just to encourage his daughters. Friday, May 24th. Susan, this is a perfect song for today, Unto the Hills. Thank you for singing.
Anna will read from the Old Testament, Isaiah 42, found on page 626 in your pew Bible. Here is my servant, who I uphold, my chosen one, in whom I take delight. I have put my spirit on him. He will establish justice among the nations. He will not shout or raise his voice or make himself heard in the street. He will not break a crushed reed or snuff out a smoldering wick. Unfailingly, he will establish justice. He will never falter or be crushed until he sets justice on earth, while coasts and islands await his teaching. These are the words of the Lord who is God, who created the heavens and stretched them out and everything that grows in it, giving breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you with righteous purpose and taken you by the hand. I have formed you and destined you to be the light for peoples, a lamp for nations, to open eyes that are blind, to bring captives out of prison, out of the dungeon where they lie in darkness. I am the Lord. The Lord is my name. I shall not yield my glory to another god, nor my praise to any idol. The word of the Lord. In the New Testament, we go to Acts chapter 2, and that's found on page 103 in the Pew Bible. The day of Pentecost had come, and they were all together in one place. Suddenly there came from the sky what sounded like a strong driving wind, a noise which filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to be flames like tongues of fire distributed among them, and coming to rest on each one. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to talk in other tongues as the Spirit gave them power of utterance. Now there were staying in Jerusalem devout Jews drawn from every nation under heaven. At this sound, a crowd of them gathered, and they were bewildered because each one heard his own language spoken. They were amazed and in astonishment exclaimed, Surely these people who are speaking are all Galileans. How is it that each of us can hear them in his own native language? The word of the Lord. Now the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 to 53, found on page 79. Jesus said to them, This is what I meant by saying, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses and in the Prophets and Psalms was bound to be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. So you see, Jesus said, that Scripture foretells the sufferings of the Messiah and his rising from the dead on the third day, and declares that in his name, repentance, bringing the forgiveness of sins, is to be proclaimed to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are to be witnesses to it all. I'm sending on you the gift promised by my Father, Wait here in this city until you are armed with power from above. Then Jesus led them out as far as Bethany, 
he blessed them with uplifted hands. And in the act of blessing, he parted from them. And they returned to Jerusalem full of joy. They spent all their time in the temple praising God. The Gospel of Christ. Thanks, choir and Derek. Let's all sing together what's called the Spirit Song 352. And kids, when we sing verse 2, which starts, Oh, come and sing the song with gladness, you're going to come up here and meet Caitlin on these front steps on verse 2.
Well, good morning. All right, so I've given each one of you a picture. Your job is to hold it up really high when I ask you to so that everyone out there can squint their eyes and try to see what it's a picture of. Okay? And then we're going to talk about what these are photos of. So, Cooper, can you hold that up high for everyone to see? It's kind of flopping. Turn it around, show the choir. Thank you. All right, Cooper, do you know what that's a picture of? Any idea? No. He says no. All right, so we've got two men in a lake with a dove above their heads. Any adults have any idea what Bible story this is? Eric's got his hand up, do you know? When Jesus got baptized, that's right. And the dove represents the Holy Spirit coming down from heaven. Okay, so Jesus is getting baptized. Holy Spirit coming down from heaven. That's our first photo. Emily, can you show yours nice and high? Good job. Do we have any idea what this could be a picture of? We've got a bunch of people in one room with fire above their heads. Any idea what story this could be? Maybe when we just read from the Bible? Choir, do you want to see it? Oh, they're nodding their heads now that they've seen it. All right, so this is when the Holy Spirit came on the disciples at Pentecost. Okay, so that's our second photo. Miss Chelsea, hold yours up nice and high. All right, and we've got, what's this one? Oh, we have a man on the beach, and we have two men in a boat with a fishing net. Any idea what Bible story this is? Show the choir. Hmm, what story could this be? Jesus calling the disciples to follow him. All right, and our last picture, let's hold it up. Show it to everyone, show it to the choir behind me. Oh, they're okay, the choir. This maybe this is the choir's children's time. All right, okay, all right. Do we know what story this is? We've got Jesus with three disciples, and there's a way, like a path. Any ideas what story this could be? Well, this is meant to represent n a number of stories from the Bible. And it's basically just a reminder of how Jesus taught the disciples to follow him. All right, so we've got four different stories from the Bible. The Holy Spirit coming at Pentecost, Jesus' baptism, calling the disciples to be fishers of men, and Jesus teaching the disciples. So, what does this have to do with us today? Why are we learning and remembering all of these stories today? Because our Bible reading today is about how the Holy Spirit came to the disciples, and it was Jesus telling them, now it's your turn to go out and make disciples. Okay? So first, Jesus calls the disciples to follow him. Okay? Each one of us here today is called to follow. Next, Jesus teaches the disciples. Each one of us is called to learn. And once we learn about God, we go and teach others. Once we've learned, we can make the decision to follow God and to receive the Holy Spirit just as the disciples received the Holy Spirit. And finally, once we believe, we have the choice, if we have not yet been baptized, to be baptized. And so today, I want to encourage you guys 
to take those steps like the disciples did, to follow Jesus, to teach others, to learn about him, and to be baptized. And when we follow God, big things happen in our lives. So let's pray, and then instead of going down to Sunday school, we're going to head back to our grandparents or parents for the rest of the service. Remember, you're going to fill out that activity sheet I gave you. All righty? So let's clap our hands together, and let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for sending the Holy Spirit into our lives. Help us to follow you each day. Amen. Derek's going to play this next song called Where the Spirit of the Lord Is. Then the choir's going to sing it because it's new for us. And after you hear the choir do it once, I'll invite you to sing along. We'll try it together after that. Signs are very important, and we ignore them at our peril. A big dump truck got stuck under a bridge, apparently because he either didn't see the sign, or he missed the sign, that, or, or ignored the sign that said, low bridge ahead. And so he was so wedged under that bridge that He couldn't go forward or backwards. It stopped traffic in all (laughs) directions, under the bridge, above the bridge. Of course, they called in emergency crews to try and figure out what to do. Um, They called in an engineer who opened up blueprints on top of his briefcase. And uh, they tried pulleys and winches, and they tried grease pads, and nothing was moving this truck. And so they were going to call in this gigantic hydraulic press that would boost or jack up the uh, bridge to get the truck unstuck. Well, there's a little boy in the crowd, because the crowd had gathered watching the spectacle, and he was on his bicycle. 
And he was near the front of the crowd and he said to the police officer who was there controlling the crowd, he said, Mr. I have a solution. And the police officer kind of ignored him and, and he, he said, Mr. I have a solution. And the officer said, that's nice son, now just keep back. While the boy was undaunted, he drove his bike over to where the important guy was studying the blueprints. And he said, sir, I have an, a solution, an idea to get the truck unstuck. And the engineer kind of smiled and said, that's nice, son. But the truck driver who was sitting nearby heard this and saw that nobody was getting anywhere after spending their hours and millions of dollars worth of equipment. He said, what is it, son? He said, why don't you just let the air out of your tires? And that little boy saved the day. <laughs> Some simple signs we can ignore, not even notice. And yet they can be very powerful. Today we're focusing on the signs of the Holy Spirit. Now we know God's invisible. Can't see him, can't touch him, can't taste him. So then how do you know God is real? How do you know we're not just imagining that he is here? Well, we read about signs of his presence. His spirit came to earth from heaven to Jerusalem 2,000 years ago on this day we call Pentecost. And in order for people to know that, to see it, and to experience it, God gave them three signs of his spirit. You may have heard this as we read Acts 2. The first was the sound of a mighty wind in the room. Now, if we were to go outside this room, we'd probably hear some wind. But have you ever heard a mighty wind? wind like the sound of a tornado wind has anybody ever heard that people say it's like a freight train coming full blast the sound of it okay well we might expect that outside sometime but in the room with windows shut door shut they heard a rushing wind not only did they hear it but they would have felt it. You get a strong blowing wind on you and uh, it's noticeable, especially in a hot Middle Eastern climate like they were in. So that was their first clue that God is here among you. You hear a sound of a strong wind and you feel that vibration of wind across your body. That was the first sign of the Spirit. The second, and Caitlin showed you a picture, were tongues of fire on everybody's head in the room. And it didn't burn them up. If we were to try putting fire on our heads today, we would have no hair. But this was a special fire God had sent from heaven that wouldn't harm them but it would show them, I'm here with you. Can you think of a time in the Old Testament when God showed up in fire? And it was a fire that didn't burn or consume. It was just there to say, see, this is God. Can you think of once? Or Moses and the, the burning bush. Was that yours? And when Israel was camped in the desert, it says at night there was a pillar of fire above them to show them that God was with them. So the disciples hear this violent rushing wind. They feel the breeze on their skin. They see tongues of fire on everyone's head that aren't burning them up. And at that point they go, God, you're not just real, 
You're really here with us today. So those were the first two signs of the Spirit. They were miracles from God. What's the third one? It says, Then the disciples began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. So the Holy Spirit gave the disciples the ability to start speaking French, Italian, German, Lithuanian, all kinds of languages that they had never studied, never spoken before. They just started coming out. Now, why would God do that miracle? How is that a sign of his Holy Spirit? Well, you understand, have to understand, Pentecost was a big week-long holiday in Jerusalem. People came from all around the world just to be at Pentecost. And because they came from other countries speaking other languages, they didn't always know what was going on. They didn't understand the common Hebrew language in Jerusalem. You know how language divides us? keeps us apart. Well, that's what they were experiencing. And the Holy Spirit said, that's not what I want. I want us to become one in Jesus. And so he gave the disciples this power to speak languages so that others could understand about Jesus in their own language. Now that third sign of the Spirit caused a real commotion. It says um, people made fun of the disciples. They said these guys are drunk on wine. Because they heard them talking, well, what sounded like nonsense. They'd never heard these languages before. So these guys are drunk on wine and Peter says, no, we're not. That's impossible. It's only nine in the morning. People who get drunk usually do so nine at night, not nine in the morning. And Peter says, this is what God promised he would do 600 years ago through the prophet Joel. He said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all people. And even you old men will see visions and speak in new tongues. Why this third sign of the Spirit, the ability to speak in different languages? Because those visitors to Jerusalem were going home in a few days. They were going back to their jobs and their families and and the one thing God wanted them to take home with them was the knowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the one who died for their sins on the cross. He is the one who rose from the dead for their salvation. And so when they heard that message in their own language, it says they were cut to the heart, meaning they were convicted. And they were changed because they asked the apostles, what should we do? We, we now hear this truth and we feel that we got to do something with the truth. Peter says, repent of your sins and be baptized. And they were 3,000 people went under the water to show that they were now putting their faith in Jesus. It's this third sign of the Spirit that changed history forever. The wind was to get the disciples' attention. The fire on their heads was to get their attention, say, see, God's here. But it was the speaking foreign languages that got everyone's attention and brought 3,000 more people, at least, into God's family that day. So those are the signs of the Spirit then, 2,000 years ago. 
As we come to the end, I want to focus on what are signs of God's Spirit today? Do you hear a violent rushing wind? Listen. Do you see fire on everyone's head? Do you hear me talking in foreign languages that I've never studied? So is the Holy Spirit with us or not? Let's figure that out. Back when I was teaching at a Bible college in the 1990s, one church in Toronto became very famous. Uh, so famous that people from all around the world would fly into Toronto just to attend this church. They called it the Toronto Blessing. And I was hearing reports that the Holy Spirit had been poured out in power on that one church. And all kinds of miraculous things were happening inside that building. In fact, in 1995, it was Toronto's number one tourist destiny, destination. More than people came to Toronto for the Jays or the CN Tower, they came to be part of this church where the Holy Spirit was on display, they say. Okay, so I'm teaching at this Bible college. Some of our students had gone to the Toronto Blessing. They'd come home all excited. You gotta go see this. You gotta experience God is there in Toronto. And, I, and we'd say, how do you know? Well, give us some signs, some proof. And they said, we saw people falling over to the ground, just like that. We saw people shaking uncontrollably. They couldn't stop. We saw and heard people laughing hysterically. <laughs> and they couldn't stop laughing. We heard people barking like dogs. True. And they said, see, those are signs that the Holy Spirit has been poured out in Toronto today. And we as professors said, we better go investigate this because the students were actually wanting our chapel services to become more like that. So we wanted to see if the Holy Spirit was in this or not. And I saw all those things that the students testified about. In fact, I went three times just to make sure it wasn't an off night. I saw grown adults crawling around the floor on all fours, pretending they're lions, because they were roaring, roar, roar, and they would paw at somebody's leg. I saw somebody stand paralyzed, and, and I watched for at least 10 minutes. The person didn't move this pose, didn't blink. And I said, how is that possible? I saw and heard more things in those three nights than I've ever seen in my church life. And we came home saying, I don't see those signs of the Spirit in Scripture. And so we would caution the students, not to try and create that in their local church when they go home on Sunday or in our chapel that we had in common. How would we know if the Holy Spirit was in our midst? Would it look like that, a circus show? Or would it look like the Bible says, and I take us to Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit, so that means the proof of the Holy Spirit, or the signs of the Spirit. Here they are. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
Paul says when you see those things in the believers' lives, there's proof that they belong to God. That's proof they have the Holy Spirit within. He's the root. So think of a tree that has roots that go underground. You can't see the roots, can you? You can't see the Holy Spirit. He's invisible. But what can you see? The fruit or the proof that he's working in our lives. Just like you can see the fruit on a tree. Jesus says, by its fruit, you'll know them. You'll understand them. And so we look at our lives. Is there love for our enemies? Is there joy when life is hard? Is there peace when people are all anxious and wanting to fight and take sides? Is there kindness to somebody who hasn't been kind to you? How about goodness? You can just be counted on to do the good and the right thing over and over. Faithfulness. You just don't quit. You don't stop doing right, even though it's not popular. You keep going. Faithfulness. And how about self-control? Probably the one area we all struggle in. Controlling ourselves and our temptations and our urges. Well, when believers show these signs of the Spirit, that's how we know God is alive today in his church. How do we get these fruit, these signs of the Spirit? I want to be more loving, more joyful, more peaceful, more self-controlled. How? All I have to do is say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Well, actually, let's say it together because it's printed in our bulletin. It's under the picture of the potter and the clay. Let's pray this together. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. When we make that our daily prayer, people will see signs of his Holy Spirit today in our lives. The signs that point to Jesus because he was perfectly loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, good, faithful, gentle, and self-controlled. We're going to sing that chorus in a little bit just to close our service, but before that, we receive offerings through the plates at each door, also electronically, you would arrange that through Tammy during the week. And again, we thank you for your gift and ask God's blessing on you. Now, if you're visiting, we don't expect a donation because this is how our members support the ministry here. Derek, thank you for your offertory. I won't try and read it.
Let's stand. Praise God. Hymn 492, Spirit of the Living God. Go now with the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus, and the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. of our God watch over.